Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be covering a um, how-to video on how to create this style fidget spinner in FreeCAD. This is the second part to the uh, f to this fidget spinner stuff. I did one on, on OpenSCAD. Check that out. This creates the same basic spinner but with a few less features. And so without further information, let's look at what version of FreeCAD I'm using. It's 0.17. This will be done mostly in the part design workbench. And let's let's get started. So we're gonna start out by just creating a new new document here, and I'm gonna close the old one there. We're gonna add a, a part, a body, and a sketch. And we're gonna do the X, sketch on the XY. I'm gonna add um, four circles, well, uh, three circles. We're gonna add one circle, and then we're gonna constrain them after we add them all. Um, we're gonna do a circle here. And you notice you don't get a constraint because so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in here first so I get that center constraint or that that line coincidence or or constrain it to the line I think it is and I'm going to move it over um, okay so and then now we're going to add a hexagon to the middle here okay and now let's do some constraints so we're going to constrain this to uh, 11.25 to get to a 22 millimeter diameter with a little bit of clearance. We're going to make this one a little bit bigger. Only select that one and we'll make that, let's make it 13. That makes it 26, maybe even a little bit bigger, but that ought to be good. Save on material, I say. So let's make this one 8. Okay, and then we're going to make this one. Um, so you see I selected the construction geometry and we're gonna make that six millimeters because that's those are the M6, I think, right? So I just hit the uh, horizontal constraint to make that, um, to square that with the center here. So now I'm gonna add a distance constraint. Let's see what our, uh, so our one degree of freedom is that. So let's see, I'm gonna make a distance constraint before I add the lines. So let's just make that 35 because I think about 60 will fit in your hand easily. Okay, so now we're fully constrained, but we need to add some lines. So we're gonna do a line here. And if you do it, if you look for that, see the red line there is that horizontal constraint. You know, we can kill a couple of birds with one stone. So I'm constrained to the circles, I'm horizontal, and I'm constrained to that circle. So that's what I want. I'm gonna do the same thing with this line here. Catch the edge of that circle, stay horizontal, catch the edge of that circle. That way I don't have to add constraints. You can, it, automatically does them as you go. I'm gonna select these two points, that line and that line, and I'm gonna do a symmetry constraint. So that gets it even. Now, it says I have one degree of freedom. Okay, so the last thing I have to do is how wide this is. So um, let's just do it 7.5. And that's it, so that's our sketch is fully constrained, which is what people recommend. And there's our sketch. Oh, nope, it's not done yet. I still have to uh, get rid of some stuff. So I need to get rid of, I need to trim out this. And I need to trim out that. And I have two degrees of freedom. Oh, because I killed my constraint point. So let's pick, try to see if I can do it. Let's see if I can do it this way. I'm going to do this point, this line, and this point, and symmetry. Oh, and I killed the distance too. <laughs> so let's add the distance, 7.5. So I should have trimmed those lines first so I didn't have to redo the work, no biggie. So there's our basic shape. Now we're gonna pad this. We're gonna pad it to the height of a uh, 609 or 607 bearing or whatever it is. So that's where the bearing's gonna go. You can see how, how easy this is already. So now I'm gonna add some fillets. <clears throat> and it's important to add fillets before you do the array because as soon as you do the array, you're not in the part design workbench because we had to do the array with a draft. So um, so let me add, because normally they say to add fillets at the end, So, but I have to add them now. So I'm gonna do a fillet there. And I'm gonna do two sets of fillets because uh, it just it doesn't seem to be able to handle the two directions. So I'm gonna do a fillet there. There. And I like I like the part design fillet because um, you see the changes as you're doing them. And if it doesn't change, it's likely that it's causing an error. So let's make that three. So that's important to remember. So if you if you hit, if you click and I'll try to do that so you see. 
if you click on something and it doesn't make the visual change, um, it's because there's some kind of error. Um, I'm going to add another ref. So let me see if I can add, try to add this ref. Uh, it added it, but uh, I know that that's going to create some kind of error. Anyway, I won't be able to show you an error. Sorry. I'm just trying to move it along. So that's our basic shape that we're going to be uh, ro uh, creating an array around the center axis. Uh, this probably should be thicker, but oh well. Um, okay, so now we're going to take this this fillet. Now I'm going to show you how the, the polar array part design doesn't work uh, in this situation. I, because it wants, it's looking for these additive primitives and it doesn't see this fillet as an additive primitive. I don't know if that by design or just is still in development or what, but right now it doesn't work. So you get create a sub additive, a subtractive primitive first. So in another video, maybe I'll just do this with primitives. Um, I, but I like sketches. I'm sorry, I just like them. It, it works with my brain. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna go over to the part workbench and I'm gonna show you just how to do a simple copy of this. So all you gotta do is the part and, where is it? Create simple copy. So there's, and you'll see, you can see it there. Okay, first I'm gonna do the super super simple uh, rotate with the transform because I, I don't know what was going on with that. So look, so you can see how I can just rotate it and I wanna do it 120, I think, yep, okay. So that that is a one really easy way to rotate it. So let's do another simple copy. Um, so we do part, create simple copy. I don't think if you control, Control C and V, I don't think is the same. Let's try that C, V, uh, maybe it is. All right, so let's transform that and we're gonna do the same thing and it's gonna be 120 from, from where it was, okay? So that's one way to create uh, the array. And so you can do as many copies as you want it. So let's get rid of those because I wanna do it, I wanna show you in, um, we're gonna do the draft away. You can also rotate something in, um, in, in draft, but it's a little more cumbersome on how to do it. Uh, this this transform tool is quite a bit easier. Oh, the other way is, let me show you. Let's do uh, create a simple copy. I have to have it, uh, all right, I already had it. So, um, is I should, uh, did it not copy? Let's try it again, create a simple copy. Oh, yeah, sorry. Um, so, so if I use placement here, I can change the, the rotation um, this way. So I can say 120. So that's, a, that's kind of more direct than the, um, than the transform tool. The transform tool is just putting parameters in here for you. Um, so, I could, so to do that again, uh, we do part, create simple copy, and go into angle, and it's gonna be uh, 240. Terrible with that kind of math. Yeah. Okay. So that's to, that's the direct entry method, and then finally I'm going to show you an array, which is my preferred. I really wish this part the part thing worked, or the um, array copy worked. In, in try again. I, re I really wish this worked, and it does work sometimes on some stuff. I don't know what the exact qualifications are for when it works. So I just make do and I use um, whatever I need to. So um, I do need to get this in the right plane, I think. So if you do, uh, if you click on the plane selection tool with with a face selected, it'll orient it to that. Um, and then what we're just gonna do is with the fillet selected, we're gonna do an array. We're gonna change this to polar array. So you gotta find uh, the type, say polar. And then we're gonna do three, and once you click off of it, you'll get the three. So if you wanted to change that to five, you get five, okay? Um, so that's it. Uh, actually, one more thing, I'm gonna show you how to uh, create an STL from that. So to create an STL, all you have to do is select the object you wanna create, you wanna export, you do file, and you go to export, and then you pick STL from the menu, and I'm gonna 
just click on fidget. I already have a fidget STL. Um, I read somewhere, I don't know if this is still true or not, that you must have the dot STL or it doesn't create it for you. So that creates the STL. I have, in my case, I have to replace it. So you see there now I, I'm going to go into Cura and you see that's the one I, that's the first one I did. You see it has flat edges. Now let's load it. So we're going to go into, sorry. Does anybody else have the folder hell that I have? So we're going to go into fidget bearings. I shouldn't say hell if I'm trying to use this for a lesson and delete this guy. And there you can see it. We got it's uh, chamfered around the edges real nicely, ready to print. So uh, more advanced might be to add a ledge to hold the bearing and nuts in, in on one side. And like this one, I think you'd have to glue them, or maybe they'd just be tight. And the other another option I'd like to try is is having it print, stop at a layer, insert a bearing, and then continue print. I'd like to try that. So, but at any rate, that's your. That's the video for today. I hope you enjoy. Um, make sure you subscribe to my channel. I'm going to uh, create more videos like this. Um, I also do OpenSCAD and I do something called BlocksCAD, which is not quite as popular, but I think it's great for younger viewers. And eventually I'll be adding some Ar Arduino and 3D printing uh, stuff as well. Have a great day.